It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Welcome to the NBA on 2K Sports. I'm Ernie Johnson. Kenny the Jet Smith is here. Say hello to the folks. Hey, hello to the folks. Hey, Shaquille O'Neal is here. Say hey to the folks. Hey, what up, folks? Uh, the NBA is really rolling along at this point. And in our matchup tonight, we'll see the Detroit Pistons going up against the Boston Celtics. So for Boston, their last game, a win against San Antonio. That game, a high-scoring affair. We'll see if this one turns into a shootout as well. We'll get to see Gordon Hayward suiting up in this one. Hayward, in addition to being a great shooter, also heavily involved in the competitive video game scene as well. Big fella, you're going to go pro in eSports anytime soon? Well, eSports is definitely on the rise, Arnie, and Hayward is ahead of the curve, but I don't really see myself sitting there. I'm too old for that, Arnie. Well, sitting and, and old kind of go together, but there's a competitive nature in which Hayward just likes to express it. This is another way he does it. Time now for tip-off. Let's send it to Kevin Harlan with the call. You're older than me, Kenny. And I like to sit. <laughs> Sunday afternoon with the NBA here on 2K Sports. Welcome, everyone. I'm Kevin Harlan, joined by the talented analyst tandem of Greg Anthony and Chris Weber. David Aldridge is on our sideline. The Detroit Pistons preparing to defend home court in this Eastern Conference battle. Their last encounter was in Boston, where they were able to handle the Celtics. Really an intimidating style of defense. I mean, they challenged everything at the rim, and that led them to victory. That was a big time block party. Even several shots they didn't even get a hand on were affected. And we've got time for a quick pregame report. With that being said, let's head to the sideline in our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge, DA. Well, guys, Stan Van Gundy has coached the likes of Alonzo Mourning, Shaquille O'Neal, and Dwight Howard. But he said, as a rebounder, Andre Drummond is as good as anybody, if not the best that I've ever been around. He just goes out and gets the ball. Drummond said, it's just a will. The will to get the ball most people won't jump for. I just put myself out there. Kevin? Thanks, DA. And Drummond is just a hulk of a man. He's really the backbone of this team. And this one features, Chris, two of the more athletic teams in the league. That makes a pretty good setup for us tonight. Oh, this is the perfect father-son, mother-daughter family game to go to. This is one of those games you'll enjoy and remember <laughs> your whole life. I mean, the highlights, you'll remember where you were. Something special is going to happen tonight. Trust me. Ready, gentlemen? Ready? It'll be the Celtics off the tip. And now the opening lineup for Boston. Irving and Brown pair at the one and the two. Greg Monroe is out there with Horford, and it's Hayward in at the small forward position. Now here's Jackson, following the miss by Kyrie Irving. Jackson kicks to Griffin. Back to Jackson. He's looking for Griffin and finds him, and it's out of bounds. The Celtics will take it the other way. Irving with the ball. They just worked San Antonio in that last game. Monroe, the pass to Horford. There's the pick. Three-pointer. Hayward. Rebounded by the Pistons. They come in fresh off a win against the Warriors. And, and once they established that flow offensively, really never got any resistance from the beat. And I feel like the defense was one step behind all night. I mean, they never made the adjustments to string together a few stops. And so it's the Pistons getting on the board first. And he gets that one to go off the front iron. Irvin is a remarkable playmaker, man. Superb at breaking down the D with his passing. 
Here's Kennard. He's covered by Brown. Johnson the screen. Up top, Griffin. He picked up 24 points in their last win against Golden State. Passes it to Kennard. Clock at four. Jackson from long range. Here's Johnson. This is to Drummond. Shoots over Monroe. And count it. And a chance for one more at the free throw line. You don't mind fouling Jean, but you got to get your money's worth. Can't allow the M1. The thought of what Andre Drummond could be down the road, I mean, really is just scary. He could dominate. If he just gets a handful of go to moves on the post, you can't stop him. He's an offensive bully on the glass. He just, potential is there. And with Drummond, as you said, Chris, he is still full of room to develop. You forget just how young he is as he's been in the league for so long already. You know, he just needs to keep improving every year. And also, he's not in the offensive system. Their system, the coaching staff, the Pistons are not known as an offensive type team. So he's going to have to get better in the summers and find his way along as time goes on. But he has an athletic skill set that you just don't see in this league anymore. Johnson shot is off. Oh, great effort there. That's how you defend the paint. Yeah, he has that capacity. He knows exactly where to position himself to protect the rim. Outside Irving. Back to Hayward. He dishes it to Irving. Goes up again. And Griffin sends it back. And stolen by Hayward. And here comes Brown. Leading the fast break. And he sinks that one, hitting the back of the rim on the way in. Uh, what speed and transition? Brown just slashing down the court for the high percentage shot. Jackson against Irving. There's the pass to Kennard. Detroit, no good that time either. He's got to be disappointed with himself on that one. He has got to knock those down. Johnson against Hayward. Pass to Irving. And it's sent back by Drummond. Oh, and the defensive chops of Drummond really helping this team. He really cleans house with his shot block. its way from Hayward for two and the shot is long the D a little slow to get in his face they're fortunate it didn't cost him. Jackson against Irving pass to Drummond stolen by Monroe and a fast break now for the Celtics here's Brown and it's good for two. Oh, you love the level of concentration Brown maintains I mean taking the hit well and finishing in style Outside Jackson. Griffin dishes to Jackson. Outside for Griffin. Shot to end this cold run. And then Griffin with the dunk. That was all about the assist. Great pass to set up the shot. Boston's gone 0 of 2 from deep here. Screen by Monroe. Hayward outside. There's the triple. Again, the miss by Hayward. He's still looking to get into a groove this court. Jackson kicks to Griffin. Back to Jackson. There's the dish to Griffin. Five on the clock. Over Horford. Griffin shot is off. The Celtics with the lead. Hayward kicks to Brown. Got a piece of it. Here's Kennard. He's covered by Brown. Kennard, the pass to Jackson. Horford against Griffin. To the wing on the left. And Drummond kicks to Griffin over Horford. And the shot falls short this time. 
Last game for the Celtics, they pick up the win against the Spurs in San Antonio. Yeah, struggled to shoot the basketball in that game, but still found a way, if you will. I mean, they had to pick up the slack in a you lot of other areas, and they did. I'm proud of the way they hustled and essentially gutted out a victory, even though things always weren't going their way. And there had been a will he or a won't he feeling with Gordon Hayward's free agency. Uh, tough choice, I got to believe, for him to leave Utah. But um, you can see shot. why he wanted to join Two forces shot. here with the Celtics. And he can't get the first one. And Boston was the heavy favorite to sign Gordon Hayward. And ultimately, the opportunity was just too hard to pass up. And, and he's reunited with his college coach, Brad Stevens. Uh, this team has a great path to make a deep playoff run. And this just adds another star to a very balanced roster. Good on the second free throw. And the Pistons with possession here. Trailing by two. Drummond the screen. Here's Jackson. And it's all evened up. Oh, you really like how determined Drummond is. Always willing to sacrifice his body to open up some space for guys. Irving dishes to Horford. It's Brown on the win. 14 points from him. The last game against San Antonio. Rebound Andre Drummond. The Pistons have gone four for nine from the field to start this game off. Johnson left side and stolen by Hayward. Launches a three. Happy to see that one go in for his second make in five attempts. That's just another one for Hayward. He's built up his body. Now he has the strength and endurance to score at will. Jackson passes to Drummond. They set the pick. Six on the shot clock. Here's Kinnar. Outside for Griffin. Shoots a three. Up again. And Drummond is right there. Drummond's got five points so far. Exactly. That's what Drummond will always give you. Tenacity on the offensive glass. Boston's gone. Just one of four from three-point range here in the first. Griffin with the steal. Jackson up top, covered by Irving. Jackson kicks to Drummond. And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the content. That one on Monroe. Look, I still can't believe how athletically gifted this kid Drummond is at the center position. It's not just his size. It's his speed. It's his quickness and jumping ability. He's off on the first. Well, with Drummond, you usually don't see someone who has as much muscle mass as he does and able to run the court and blow by defenders. But, Chris, he does it on a nightly game-to-game -game basis. It's crazy. He tries and kind of plods down the court. But when he gets the ball, he has a burst off the dribble. And you're just like, are you kidding me? His consistency needs to come. But don't sleep on his quickness in the lane. And the second free throw, good. Now we talk about young players improving their game a lot, but Chris, which veterans in the league have impressed you with their ability to change and adapt their game as they get older? Well, Paul Millsap, I think he's been under the radar and underrated for the last uh, two, three, four years. He's been the best post player uh, offensively on the post, in my opinion. And I think his game is overlooked, and he's a veteran that continually gets better. And, and then other guys that add different parts to their game, like the Marcus Saul. Uh, being able to step out and hit threes. He's a former defensive player of the year, being able to expand his game on the offensive end. You have to love guys that have the mentality that they can always improve like these two. The Pistons making a change here. Tolliver's check in. Here's Ennis. Fires from deep. Rebounded by Smart. And right from the start, Kevin, they've been pounding the glass. Most of those 50-50 balls also going their way. 
Playing big, willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the guy who towers over him. Well, it's just an attitude, a way of life. You can't let people see you back down, or they take it as a sign of weakness and expect that treatment every time. There's Galloway following the bucket by the Celtics. It, it really does make the game easy for your teammates when you can lead them to the rim that well with a pass. Here's Rozier. He averages a bit over six points a game. Puts it up from 12. But they'll get another chance. To the middle. Here's Baines. And finally they hit one. Baines has got his first points of the game. That's what every team needs. Guys getting after it on the offensive board. Smith outside. Kicks to Tolliver. It's stolen by Morris. And that's out of bounds. Boston will retain possession. Boston's gone one of five from downtown in the first quarter. Points out there have been hard to come by. Here's Rozier, covered by Smith. Baines, and he gets the friendly spin, and that one drops. Now it's a four-point Boston lead. Oh, that's a nice look, recognizing he had the opening to make the entry pass. And this dishes to Tolliver. Smith with a wide-open look. Hits it from three-point range. And this is the one area Smith must continue to work on. I love seeing him knock down the three ball, expanding his range. Feeds it to Tatum. He kicks to Baines. Passes it to Smart. Lock at six. Misses in close. Thought he was going to be able to take advantage of the D there. He had the space. Galloway, the pass to Lewis. And that's out of bounds. Detroit will retain possession. A chance here to assess what parts of the floor the attempts have been coming from as we look at the shot chart for Detroit. And they are going where the going is good for them right now. The painted area, high percentage and high volume shots. Austin on D. It's tipped. Unbelievable rejection from Smart there. Really using his insane vertical to send that one back. He can't get it to go. The Pistons go the other way with it. Smith outside. That's in. He's got two made now, and he's shooting two for three. The cleverness of Smith showing himself once again. Terrific at getting into the heart of the D and then cashing in. 151 left in the first. Rozier kicks to Tatum. Shot clock at six. Boston, no good that time either. The Pistons leading. Ennis dishes to Smith. From the strike, and he hits the jump shot. Smith's got seven. Boston's gone one of five from downtown in the first quarter. Points out there have been hard to come by. Morris a screen. Rozier kicks to Smart. There we go. Now in the scoring column with that make, he is one for four. Oh, the mid-range game, a lost art. Nice bucket by Smart. They set the pick. Smith kicks to Ennis. 55 seconds left here in the opening quarter. Shoots from eight. And Detroit again with the bucket. Those defenders just look a little bit gassed. I mean, they're getting pushed around on that low block. Here's Rozier. Morris outside. The feed now to Smart. A baseline J. And it's Lure with the rebound. No other way to put it. Just a rough quarter in terms of scoring. He has not been helping at all. Here's Tolliver. The shot, no good. Good work defensively by Morris. Smart kicks to Rozier. 
can't cash in from close range. Here's Galloway. Here's Ennis. And Ennis slams it in. And, and nobody, guys, among the defenders stepping up to challenge him on that drive to the 10. And, Greg, he says, thank you very much, and <laughs> sails in for the flush. But it's surprising, Kev, to see so little urgency on the defensive side, especially with them losing this game right now. And we reach the end of the first quarter. The Pistons on top. They're up by five. Stay with us as we get set to bring you the second quarter right after this. We caught up with Kyrie Irving earlier, and he talked a little bit about expectations for himself and his teammates. Well, we expect so much out of each other every single night, and, you know, the team is going to go as hard as we go, as well as the other pieces that we have on the team. But we have to control it from a standpoint that we have to play off each other. Kyrie reminding us that it's not just the expectations of the fans and the media, but also perhaps the most demanding of all are the expectations they've got for each other. Oh, oh yeah. They're constantly trying to manage expectations while still demanding the best from one another. And I got to tell you, it's fun to watch. And the first quarter is in the books. Second about ready to get underway. And guys, looking at what you've seen so far from the Pistons, what do you think? I think they play great D and, and not giving up anything easy early on. Yeah, closing down the lane, closing out on perimeter shooters. Interesting first quarter. And a chance here presented by Gatorade to see who's on the floor. All fueled up and ready to go for the start of the second quarter. On the court for the Celtics. Rozier is out there with Smart. Then it's Tatum. Then it's Marcus Morris. And it's Baines in at the five down low. Here's Galloway. Hits the front of the rim and out. Celtics trail by five. And Chris, growing up a fan of the Pistons, did you have any particular moment that sticks out to you about this franchise? Oh, so many moments. Uh, Isaiah Thomas winning MVP uh, in uh, the All-Star game. Uh, so many moments. Joe Dumas uh, playing great defense uh, on Michael Jordan, sweeping uh, the 1989 finals. That was our first time. And in high school, I remember we had these little pocket TVs that one of my friends had. We actually got to watch uh, the game as the Pistons played against Portland. So, of course, I have uh, many memories. You want some more? I, I keep going on and on and on and on. Okay, well, let's go down to David Aldridge for a report from the sideline. Kevin, Celtics coach Brad Stevens is known for getting the best out of his players. He said every NBA player has an elite strength. Some of them have 10 of them. And those guys are the very best in the league, right? But every one of them is here for a reason. And there are times where you can really soar with that skill. Kevin? And that's why Stevens is already one of the best coaches in the league, David. You've talked about him for a long time, getting maximum results from every one of his players. Tolliver hits them both. Well, we talk so much about what it's like on the floor, Chris, but I, I wonder what it was like off the floor when you were on the bench watching the team play and, and what was going through your head and mind. What did you and your teammates talk about as you were on the bench taking a rest and watching the game go on? It, it depends on which game. You know, if you're in L.A. and, and you see, uh, you know, Eddie Murphy and Rihanna walk in, you're going to say, hey, look at uh, Beyonce and Jay over there. Or, you know, um, if you're watching a great play and you see a guy dunk on your teammate, you're not going to get too excited, but you're going to whisper to your teammate, man, did you see that? That's crazy. Or, you know, you're pumping up guys because they've been working so hard in practice and it's a guy who's getting his first time to kind of get in and get a good run. So you're cheering him on. And so being on the bench, you know, it's a lot of fun. You have to stay focused and ready to re-enter the game. But part of that job on the bench is to keep the energy of the bench, and that's to keep guys encouraged, to be loose, uh, to have fun. And uh, so it's a lot of fun being on the bench. And more fun when you're winning than losing, but a lot of fun being on the bench encouraging guys. Free throw good, lure. And no secret here, this is what you need to do with the lead. Hit your free throws, and they're having a great second quarter at the line. Griffin's checked in for James Ennis. Boston also with the sub. Irving's checked in. And lure drops them both. 
His free throw ability makes him tough to defend in the post. Teams can't get too physical with him. Celtics trail by nine. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. Irving with the ball. Now Smith defending. Morris, no good. Solid rebound there. And with the score like it is, that's an area where they can't afford to get lazy. Here's Galloway. Smith for three. That shot missing. Irving against Smith. Now here's Smart. He's covered closely, and the layup's good off the glass. And finally, someone scores. Yeah, this is low output for both teams. This is ugly. The defense is having their way so far. Now here is Smith. He's got seven. To the paint. Fades back. That shot by Griffin, no good. Celtics trail by seven. Tatum kicks to Smart. Out to Morris. For three. And the three ball is good. Morris has got himself on the board with three there. Well, yeah, Morris is just a tremendous shooter. He has great touch from beyond the arc. There's Galloway, guarded by Smart. In the corner, it's Griffin. From deep, that's good. And so Galloway with the assist. Seven points for Blake Griffin. And good passing, setting up a lot of these buckets right now, Kevin. That's been the key. Smith against Irving. Whistle on the play. Bucket's good. He'll go to the line. You see the cleverness of Irving on that play. Able to get his shot off despite getting wet. And Kyrie Irving very steady with the ball in his hands. Not a lot of turnovers for a player who handles the ball as much as he does. Yeah, I mean, he makes great reads. Pick and roll, drives, kicks. He One keeps shot. his dribble low, but sometimes he has his dribble high. He's great at the pocket passes, great off pick and rolls, great at screens, and can space the floor. Here's what Detroit's going with right now. Drummond's checked in for Luer. Johnson comes in for Anthony Tolliver. Kennard, he's checked in for Langston Galloway. And Reggie Jackson subbed in for Smith. If you ask me, Irving has quickly ascended into one of the league's best players. I mean, a fast, lethal point guard with a beautiful jump shot. What else can you ask for? Johnson can't hit. Celtics trail by five. For three, Hayward. Blake Griffin pulls it in. Detroit's gone one of three from way outside since the start of the second quarter. And the pass to Kennard. The shot, no good. Good work defensively by Monroe. Irving against Jackson. Irving passes to Monroe. Hayward outside. Horford sets a screen for Hayward. Six to shoot. Again, the miss by Hayward. And not a night he's going to want to remember. Just not really able to score the basketball. Jackson kicks to Griffin. Drummond, a screen. Here's Kennard. He's covered by Brown. Again, the miss by the Pistons. And he rushed that one, no doubt about it. The D. Allen's position, you could see the frustration on his face. Monroe dishes to Irving. Tries yet again. It's good, and the Piston lead is cut down now to just three on the bucket from Monroe. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Jackson against Irving. Jackson passes to Griffin. Johnson in the corner. And the rejection by Monroe. And it's Drummond with the jam. He's got his fourth free throw of the game. throw good Drummond 
And you look at this Celtics roster, a bevy of long athletic wing players. They seem to be taking a cue from teams like the Warriors who have found success with defensive switching and, and positionless basketball. Wow, he's really been dragging him down. Tonight. And Jackson gets it to go. And the Pistons lead by eight. Oh, man, and Jackson is just incredibly fast in transition. It's just the defense's worst nightmare when he's leaking out in the open floor. Pass to Kennard. Off target there, that would have pushed the lead to double digits. And the Celtics, as you see, are stockpiling wing forwards. Brown, Tatum, Hayward. And we're seeing those guys lining up at the two, three, and four. It gives Brad Stevens tremendous roster versatility. Detroit with the ball after Gordon Hayward's miss. Here's Drummond, 11 feet out, and he hits it. Drummond's got five points now this quarter. Uh, and the confidence of Drummond just saw him when he's attempting these mid-range shots. So the Celtics call timeout. They're first. And you so often hear about how much Detroit Pistons fans pride themselves on the defense of this team. It's a part of the franchise's identity. All the fans in Detroit definitely love their defense. And only a handful of teams have a franchise identity like that with the Pistons and defense. Maybe the Lakers play an up-tempo or, or Memphis grinding it out. Well, yeah, not many teams or, or franchises have an identity, and that's what makes it so special to play in Detroit for that reason. There's nothing like hearing the crowd get hyped for a defensive stop. Here's Hayward, and Hayward with the stuff. And if that doesn't get them fired up, guys, nothing will. Greg, just what the doctor ordered, huh? Some high-flying annex to narrow the deficit. Well, also a miscommunication on defense. No one rotates over. See ya. So it's Detroit now after the basket by Boston. Stolen by Monroe. And now Hayward pushing it up. No one back to stop him. You'd better keep your hands up if you've been playing with these guys over the past month because if you're open, they'll find you. Kyrie Irving, number one. Really been in sync with his teammates over that period. I mean, his passing has been phenomenal. And Gordon Hayward has increased his scoring average every season he's been in the league. And couple that last year also, a career high in offensive efficiency. The guy is just a budding superstar. Free throw good from Hayward. And Gordon Hayward has worked on his strength, but also his balance, adding boxing, Greg, as you were talking about, to his off-season training. Yeah, great point. I mean, the strength, the balance, and footwork make him a great slasher. This guy gets in the lane and just has a knack for working himself to the foul line. He's off on the second. Pistons leading by seven. Shots good by Kennard. Kennard's got his first points in this one. Here's Irving. He's a guy we see deliver on a nightly basis, averaging about 24 and a half points a game. Screen by Monroe. Shakes off the strong D and gets to the bucket for two. Irving's got four points this quarter. And Irving is terrific at draining difficult shots. He's a tough shot maker, showing superb concentration inside. Pass to Kennard. He feeds it to Drummond. Six to shoot. Johnson kicks to Jackson. Off target from three-point range. Celtics trail by seven. Dishes to Brown. And taken away by Johnson. A solo fast break. Oh, and the jam by Drummond. Oh, you have to love the commitment from Johnson on defense. Swiping at the ball and coming up with big steals thanks to his length. And that was Under Armour bringing you that replay. Unleash chaos. And what a play it was. Now here's Irving. Again, Irving missing. Well executed. Great rhythm. You've got to finish that. Yeah, coming off of a good pick. You want to get that one. He gets the separation he needs. I know he would love to have that one back. One of the most impressive things about Blake Griffin is Greg when he gets out and runs the open floor. Yeah, not to mention his ability to run the break himself uh, a terrific ball handler even under pressure and one of the best passers at the four in the league if not the best
and the first one at the line is good. Well, we always hear about how some guys are locker room leaders or a veteran presence on a team. Chris, how quickly does someone establish themselves as a team leader? It's universally embraced by the rest of the team. It's tough. You know, some guys can come in and do it day one, but I think that we've seen a lot of leaders grow, whether it was a great leader like a two-time MVP in Nash. It took some years first for him to understand himself and then kind of let his leadership uh, just you follow that on the court. We bring that to today with a guy like a John Wall. It's taken him about four or five years to really learn to be around veterans, but guys are coming in younger now. And so uh, I think that it's going to take a little bit of time to develop. But as long as they're continuing to learn, as long as they're continuing to put the effort out, because you're a leader first by what you do, not by what you say. And so if mm -hmm. you are trying to figure your way out and work hard, then you're being a leader. People are figuring it out. It's usually when does the vocal part come in, uh, along with uh, kind of leading by an example. And so I think for every person it's different, but it's a lot Take of fun break. watching Take because when they get to Two that shot. point, you've definitely seen some development and growth from them mentally and physically when you know they've taken over the reins like a guy like John Wall has. Good insight. The first free throw is good. And they're getting to the line a lot in this quarter, guys, and it hasn't been by accident. And so Monroe nails both of them. You know, so many people were surprised at the Kyrie Irving trade, but throughout the decades, Boston's been unafraid to pull the trigger. I mean, they moved up to number two to draft the great Bill Russell, moving back to number three to draft McHale, at Parrish, assembling the big three for a championship, then dismantling that big three for all those unprotected picks. This is an organization that stops at nothing to try and win titles. Here is Hayward following the score by Reggie Jackson. Hayward, happy to see that one go in. He's shooting four for ten with that basket. And they keep hammering away at him inside, forcing the ball into the paint. Jackson dishes to Ennis. Drummond with a screen on Brown. Now here's Jackson. Tight defense on him. The shot, no good. Good work defensively by Horford. And, you know, thinking about Kyrie's legacy here in Boston, this is a town that cares only about championships. That's how his contribution is going to be measured. And only time will tell if he can walk in the shoes of the greatest players to ever put on a Celtics uniform. And it's Brown missing. And, and battling hard on the glass, they hold the advantage here so far. And Ennis slams it in. There you see why you want the ball in Jackson's hands as much as possible. He can clearly set the table. Celtics trail by 11. Rozier the pass to Monroe. And count it. He'll head to the line with a chance to make it three. And how about the bounce pass there being used to perfection? You know, and if you remember in college with the Gators, you know, Al Horford played power forward. Power forward, center, they're, they're the same now, but he's been out of position his entire NBA career, so you have to give him credit for playing tough night in and night out. Looking at who's out there now for the Pistons. John Lure, he's checked in for Andre Drummond. Tolliver comes in for Blake Griffin. Langston Galloway's checked in for Johnson. And Smith subbed in for Find Reggie Jackson. Find the lane. One shot. That one falls for Horford. And as the league has moved to emphasize skill, it seems like things, uh, Chris, are tipping Horford's way as far as him manning that center position. Yeah, but you still have to be able to score inside. And so for Horford, we saw in the playoffs, you have to make your presence known inside. Though you're a big fella, you have to average a lot of rebounds or you have to be physical inside. You still have to make your presence and your size known. Now, here is Morris. Looking at his point production, he averages almost eight points a game. Five to shoot. Here's Rozier. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. And Stan Van Gundy, known for being one of the more demanding coaches when it comes to defense, 
He doesn't care who you are. If you're not giving it your all on the defensive end, you're going to find yourself on the bench. Well, he's clear with what he wants and what he expects and, you know, when you step on the floor. Shooting two. free throw missing and the Celtics building a new 70,000 square foot practice facility they'll call it the Auerbach Center oh yeah very impressive uh, set to open this spring the Celtics one of those forward thinking organizations I'm not surprised to see them investing in their play development Aaron Baines he's checked in for the Celtics and he sinks the second oh the fearlessness by Rozier that's what helps him earn the trip to the strike Now, here is Smith. He's tightly guarded. In the corner, it's Galloway. And Baines pulls it down. Baines has got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Second shot opportunity. Morris, no good. Pistons leading by seven. Smith kicks to Lewis. There's 48 seconds left in the second quarter. Here's Galloway. There we go. Now in the scoring column with that make. He is one for four. Celtics trail by nine. Here's Rozier. Morris outside. Wants to get it to Smart and does. Back to Morris. Lots of room. Good and Smart gets the assist. Morris has got five points in the quarter. Oh, nice look there from Smart. Finding the open man. Just one second between the shot clock and game clock. Here's Galloway. It's tipped. It's stolen by Morris. And this is where you milk the clock. You're exactly right. No reason to give your opponent another crack at this. It's all you. Here's Galloway. And so it's the Detroit Pistons heading to the bench with a seven-point lead as we wrap up the quarter. A look at the field goal percentage numbers tells the story of what tough defense they're playing today. We've got more NBA basketball coming your way in just a minute. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. And what an amazing performance the hometown fans are witnessing here tonight. Ernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Shaquille O'Neal. Andre Drummond having an outstanding game. He had 13 points, 10 rebounds, and two blocks. He struggled in their last game, but he's not having any problems tonight. Really good first half for him. He was right on the mark. Taking a look at the Pistons, Shaq, what did you think? Well, this has been a great overall performance. They matched their effectiveness on offense with their intensity on D. And the same all-around effort is going to be crucial in the second half. They still got work to do. Don't celebrate too early. And over to Kenny. What did you think about Boston? Their inaccuracy from behind the arc was brutal. Shot selection, I didn't see any. The perimeter offense they're running, you could scrap that. They need to get back to the basics. Pound it inside, more pick and roll. Try to pick up some easy buckets in transition. And time now to send you back down to the floor with Kevin Harlan. We'll see you later. All right, the second half beginning in just a moment. Andre Drummond has been sensational. Yeah, and the fact he's posted a double-double with about half the game left to play, that's impressive. Well, it comes down to talent comes down to hustle. He's shown both in a big way so far. Pistons leading by seven. They've got Kennard. Johnson is out there with Griffin. And there's Jackson. And it's Drummond in at the five. That's the group starting the second half for Stan Van Gundy. Now here's Jackson. Hayward outside. And the three off target. Piston shooting a respectable 47% from the field in this one. Oh. Oh. 
<laughs> the exceptional athleticism of Drummond on full display tonight. Just an unreal athlete. And the highlight real replay brought to you by Under Armour. Another Unleash Chaos moment. Excellent work by the talented people in our production truck as well. Now, here's Brown. Six on the shot clock. Irving attacking. And here we go. The Pistons fast break. Jackson's got the ball. He muscles it in through the contact, and they call the foul. He's on his way to the free throw line. Well, what about the concentration of Johnson? Just burying the bucket despite the harm. Well, many had high hopes for what Stanley Johnson could be in the NBA, but after a rough sophomore season, questions have been raised. See Webb, the former ninth overall pick, the player of the year in high school in Los Angeles, a terrific uh, freshman year at Arizona. He saw a major regression in many areas of his game. Well, look, the NBA is a different level, and when you come in as young as, as Stanley came in, uh, you're going to have to figure your way out. He's with a great organization, great coaches around. He should improve with hard work. And that one falls for Johnson. And Johnson, the former Arizona Wildcats, certainly has a bright future in this league. The combination of shooting, speed, and length he possesses is just exciting. Hayward goes in. And when you look at what the Pistons have done, pretty clear that this is a team that has a vision of who they want to be. Strong defensively, really good at rebounding the basketball and I think deliberate and patient on the offensive side of the floor. And he makes the first. Hayward hits them both. And if you're just joining us, we played over a minute here in the third. Here's Kennard. A look at his stats. He averages a bit over eight points a game and stolen by Horford. Here's Irving. And some very quick points for him on that possession. Irving's got six points. Uh, Irving, just an exceptional score. So effortless. You've got to appreciate his shooting for him. Drummond the screen. Jackson kicks to Johnson. Drummond with a screen on Hayward. Second chance shot. Drummond dishes to Johnson. Passes to Kennard. The three. Kept alive. Back to Johnson. Kicks it to Jackson. Poked away and stolen by Horford. Jackson against Irving. Horford sets a screen for Irving. Five on the clock. The baseline J. Jump shot is good. Irving's got four points in the quarter. No, nothing defensively you can do to slow Irving. He has perfect form, even when the D is right up on him. Drummond the screen. Johnson against Hayward. Here's Drummond. Detroit, no good that time either. Celtics trail by six. The dish to Horford. Can't cash in from close range. Here's Kennard. He's covered by Brown. Here's Griffin. And finished off by Griffin. Oh, my word. I shouldn't be amazed anymore when Griffin pulls off a dunk like that, but I always seem to be. The man has some unreal moves above the rim. Here's Irving following the bucket by the Pistons. He dishes it to Horford. Good, and the assist goes to Irving. Horford's got his second bucket of the game to go. 
And guys, the D has to show a little more fight on the interior than they did on that trip. And Drummond kicks to Jackson. The pass to Kennard. Feeds it to Drummond. Over Horford. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. And with all the talk about Kyrie coming to Boston, you still have to figure how he'll fit in to the team. Has this year and next left on his contract, player option after that. But with his scoring and shooting, should make this offense even more potent. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. He misses the free throw. Yeah, and when you put a player of Kyrie's ability into this Boston system, you have to expect good things. Irving does so much for himself and others. The longer he plays with the team, I think the more comfortable he'll become. He hits the second from the line. Uh, you love the heart that Drummond plays with. He's just a physical beast who's using his gigantic size incredibly well. Irving kicks to Hayward. Offline with his three. A good job by him on the glass here tonight. Plus eight in that department. On the wing, Johnson. Outside, Griffin. He kicks to Jackson. Drummond with a screen on Irving. Jackson passes to Drummond. Tries it from 19. New 24-second clock for Detroit. Griffin dishes to Johnson. Here's Kennard. He's covered by Brown. Yep, that one goes. And the Pistons lead by nine. Not an easy finish right there, but a beautiful move to give himself just enough space to get in close and knock it down. The screen from Brown. Irving against Griffin. Irving kicks to Horford. Over Jackson. Horford, no luck. Detroit leading by nine. Jackson with it. He's picked up by Irving. Griffin, no one around him. Sinks the triple. Griffin's got 14 points. Love seeing the offense run through the big man. Drummond with great vision and terrific speed. Now a timeout called by Boston. Well, the one thing you notice about the Celtics, they look for players with a chip on their shoulder. They want players with that inner fire, that, that love competition. Here's a look at the stats for Griffin. The last 10 games, he has been on a heck of a run, averaging about 23 points per, nine rebounds, and three assists. And what sets him apart is his rebounding. And as you can see, he's been in peak form. This last stretch, unbelievable tenacity going to the glass. It's been reflected in that statue. Now, here is Irving. He's got eight over Jackson. Not enough on that one as it misses. And you look up and down the Celtics roster, Chris, a lot of guys who play with a chip on their shoulder. Well, that's how you build a culture. It rubs off on the other players. I mean, you have to find those guys, though. It's not something you can teach. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. And no longer a guy you're okay to foul. Griffin's made steady improvement at the free throw line. These are his third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. And that 84% free throw percentage is a testament to all the hard work he's put in on the line. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And he knocks down the first one. Griffin hits them both. Celtics trail by 14. Picked by Horford. Irving kicks to Hayward. Shot clock at five. 
Horford sets a screen for Hayward. Shoots over Griffin. Again, the miss by the Celtics. And a big lead for them on both the scoreboard and the backboard thus far. And Griffin slams it in. Just increasing their advantage. And right now, they're in a zone on both ends. Oh, that's why you see them flexing a little bit. They're feeling good about how they dominate. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need a basket. Here's Irving. Again, Irving missing. Yeah, really frustrating right now. They just can't seem to stem the tide here. Yeah, going up against the big run, trying to mount one of your own. I mean, it's exhausting and takes a tremendous amount of energy here. Nothing seems to be going down for him today. And that one is good. Irving's got six in the quarter. Nice bucket. There's no question about his skills at the offensive end. And the Pistons decide to take their first timeout right here. Now, that's a great timeout call by the coach there to try to calm his team down. They're turning the ball over way too much. And the Pistons, an entirely new group now out there. And we take a look here at the shot chart for Boston. And when you look at this shot chart, you, you get a good visual of just how often they are settling for something outside. They, they have to know that this defense wants them to take those kinds of shots, and they would be a lot better off if they recommit to attacking the basket. And the call will go against Anthony Tolliver. That's his first foul. Celtics trail by 14. Celtics passing it around. Now here's Tatum. Defense is right there. Rebound by the Pistons. Lures got seven rebounds in the game. Galloway the pass to Lure. And finished off by Lure. Such incredible hops for center. Look, it allows him to hold his own against any other five in the league. Boston's gone 0 of 2 from deep to start things here in the second half. Got a piece of it. They set the screen. Rozier kicks to Morris. There's the feeds of Smart. Fires from the wing. And it's off the back rim. No good. And it's Detroit's ball. They're on a 14 to 4 run right now. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Ish Smith. That'll be his second foul of the game. Celtics trail by 16. Here's Rozier. Pass to Morris. Shoots from the baseline. It's blocked. Now here is Smith. Defense is right there. Here's Luer, and he drops in the layup off the glass. Luer's got four points in the quarter. Nice work to get in position for the rebound and the putback. He has no off switch. Here's Rozier. Morris with a screen on Smith. Now here's Tatum. Just five on the clock. They get the rebound. Morris kicks to Rozier. Morris a screen. Pass to Baines. Here's Rozier. In the corner. Tatum with it. Pass to Rozier. Morris outside. They shoot again. That's tipped. Now here's Ennis. Defense right on him. Misses the layup. Even that close to the bucket. That's a very tough finish in that kind of track. Tatum with it. Now guarded by Ennis. So it's Boston now. Morris passes to Rozier. Morris a screen. Tatum dishes to Morris. Another miss, and they desperately need a bucket. Detroit leading by 18. 
Smith outside. And it's Lure, top of the key. That one rolling around and rims out. Whoa, the D caught a break on that play. I'm sure that is not the plan, leaving him so wide open. Smart kicks to Rozier. Smart with the ball. Working on Tolliver. And the bucket counts. Three-point chance here. You better get your money's worth with Marcus Smart. I mean, that ticky-tack stuff won't faze him. And it's 6'4", 220. Marcus Smart with terrific strength for a combo guard, Greg. Yeah, I mean, he can just flat-out bully most guards and even hold his own against the bigs beyond though that physical stature it's his mentality that makes him special he's a fire breather J just the type of player the celtics look for And the sixth pick in the 2014 draft out of Oklahoma State, one of the Cowboys, Marcus Smart, might not put up eye-popping numbers, Chris, but they love what he brings to the table. Yeah, it's all about his heart. I mean, his offensive game has been a little slow to develop. He doesn't shoot great percentages. And when his team needs him most, it seems like he always has a big impact on the game, whether offensively, defensively, a big rebound. He, he's just a good luck charm for them. He's, he's almost like the leprechaun. Rozier kicks to Smart. Now here's Tatum. He's guarded closely. The pass to Rozier. Four on the clock. Over Smith. Hit some rim on the way in, and the bucket's good. Rozier's got five points so far. Smith outside. Lure the screen. Here's Galloway. Terrific design on the pick play. And he lays it in. Galloway has got his second bucket. And after really leaning on that three-point shot in the first half, seeming like they're uh, just getting away from it here in the second. More of the shots coming from the interior. Now here's Tatum. No scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. It's stolen by Smith. Galloway kicks to Smith. At the top of the key, Galloway to the wing on the left. Just five to shoot. Tolliver, no luck. Uh, he can hit that fadeaway shot, but with the D on him, you can't blame him for attempting that shot. Smart passes to Morris. Off on the layup. You can see that he definitely takes rebounding seriously, and his size really helps him come down with plenty of those tough boards. And so is Detroit, feeling good about their 17-point lead heading into the break. They've been putting on a clinic in the paint. Shots are falling with regularity, and they are pounding it down low. And we'll be right back after this. And meanwhile, Coach Brad Stevens talking to his team. Piece by piece, chip away. See if you can't, next time we get together, have it down a few. Brad Stevens reminding his guys, you still have time to get where you want to be. Just take it one possession at a time. Well, he wants them to relax. I mean, there are going to be ups and downs over the course of a game. Just breathe and play. And we welcome you back as we get going here in the fourth quarter. The final quarter of play can change everything. On the floor for Boston, we've got Aaron Baines. Smart is out there with Rozier. Then it's Tatum, and it's Morris in at the four spot. Tatum kicks to Baines. Ennis on the double team. And the wide open shot from Morris. And it's off from three-point range. He hit a three in the first half. Now he's searching for his first outside shot in the second half. That one goes in. Tolliver's got the first basket as we get going in the fourth for the Pistons. Indicative of what we've seen tonight. One team being the aggressor, the other failing to react. You know the saying, numbers don't lie. 
You can see it up there on the scoreboard. Look, that matches his three-point total from the first half. He had one in the first. Now he's got one in the second. Now a timeout called by Detroit. Well, and, and the Celtics bringing in Brad Stevens as head coach in 2013. That same summer, they made their blockbuster trade with the Nets. Two home run moves for their franchise. So Boston going with almost an entire new group. Monroe's checked in for Aaron Baines. Horford comes in for Marcus Morris. Gordon Hayward's checked in for Tatum. And Irving subbed in for Terry Rozier. This is to Griffin. Back to Jackson from downtown. Rebound Boston. And the Celtics signed Brad Stevens to a six-year contract to lure him away from Butler in college basketball. Uh, Chris, they were very confident he'd be a great coach. Well, they might want to pull out their pen and have him sign another six-year deal real quick because he's already established himself as one of the league's top coaches. Drummond, and it's sent back by Horford. Here's Hayward, lays it up, and despite of the excellent defense at that. Defensively, this is what you know. He's coming off a hot game and looking to keep it rolling. Yeah, but here's the problem. They play team ball. So if you pay him too much attention, that just leaves other guys open and it's too difficult of an adjustment to make. And the Celtics making a change here. Brown's checked in. Free throw, no good for Drummond. Celtics trail by 16. Nobody near Irving. His three-pointer is off the mark. Not watching the line there. That'll be a backcourt violation. They're doing well overall, but the turnovers have been the exception. And so it's Boston with it. Pick by Horford. Irving kicks to Horford. Inside. And it's Brown missing. Pistons leading by 16. Outside Jackson. Over Irving. Jackson gets the bucket. Well, it's nice to have an option like him every time down the court. For Boston, they've gone just 33% from the field in the fourth quarter so far. They are two of six. Irving dishes to Monroe. Good, and the assist goes to Irving. Irving's got four assists in the game. Uh, look at Irving go to work off the ball screen and his man. He's always alert, constantly scanning the floor for his teammates. Jackson kicks to Griffin. The three from Johnson. And Boston with the rebound. Hayward's got his third rebound on the night. Here's Irving. And he floats in for the easy two. Credit the assist on that one. Yeah, getting theirs before the defense can set up. Well, that's just the aggressiveness of transition, making sure they come away with points. Pick by Griffin. Drummond with a screen on Hayward. Here's Jackson. Here's Drummond outside for Griffin. Jackson in the corner. Good on the three-point shot. Jackson's got five points in the quarter. Uh, the D did a good job shutting him down in the first, but he got loose and easily dropped that one in. Screen by Monroe. Here's Irving. Off the left rim and out. Almost every look he gets inside is a good one, but the D hangs in there and makes it a tough one. Griffin passes to Kennard. And it's sent back by Horford. Wow, the rim protection by Horford. I mean, Al Horford standing six foot ten, always played bigger. And it's Brown missing. A highlight reel play all the way, just can't connect. Well, a good at oh, 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 that's an old fashioned rim wrap. Uh, just a remarkable gem. These fans' jaws are on the ground right now. Time called here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. Well, he just can't get anything to drop today, and his team is hurting as a result. He should concentrate on moving the ball around and, and getting his guys involved. Celtics trail by 19. Irving dishes to Hayward. 
picked by Horford. Back to Irving. And it's sent back by Drummond. And here's Jackson. Left side, Griffin. It's good. The assist this time from Jackson. And that's 23 points for Blake Griffin. Oh, I love to see how Jackson runs the offense, keeping his eyes moving so he can set up his guys with the pass. Brown kicks to Monroe. And on the way from Irving for three, cans it from downtown. Irving's got 11 in the second half. And he's shaking off that slow start, giving them a boost here in the second. Kicks it to Jackson. Drummond sets the screen for Jackson to the middle. And it's Drummond with the jam. What an amazing display of concentration by Drummond, taking the hit like a champ and completing the bucket. Celtics trail by 21. Monroe with a screen on Jackson. Irving. Some solid defense there from Jackson. Detroit's gone 2 of 5 on three-point shots since the end of the third quarter. Johnson, good. Well, the Celtics shooting 32% overall right now. Not one of their better showings. Monroe with a screen on Jackson. Again, Irving missing. Hard to figure out how he doesn't knock that one down. No defender in sight. Outside Griffin. He feeds it to Jackson. Pass to Kennard. Just five to shoot. Johnson the screen. Shot off the pick. And Horford pulls it down. Well, this has not been his best effort. He's lucky his teammates have been there to bail him out. Irving for three. Cranes the three-pointer. Uh, I like how quick Irving shoots from beyond the arc. Now, when he's got a clean look, he lets it fly immediately. Irving against Jackson. There's the dish to Drummond. Back to Jackson. Over Irving. Tried to bank it in, but he misses. He operates well in traffic, but still, that's just a tough play to finish. The NBA coaching ranks always looked at and scrutinized. Only 30 great jobs out there in the league, and yet they're on the firing line, it seems like, every season. Chris, what enables head coaches, in your opinion, to be successful? And uh, has that changed over the years? Well, I think what allows you to be successful, first of all, uh, what is your acumen for the game? Can you communicate? Can you inspire players? Are you a humble guy? And, uh, you know, I, I think those are the main things that, that you have to you know, have as a coach. But look, players get traded all the time. Everybody's under pressure. So, you know, <laughs> just got to do your best and keep it moving. The first one falls. Wow, they've made every free throw here in the second half. And so Irving nails both of them. Detroit leading by 18. Outside Jackson. He dishes it to Drummond. Pistons passing it around. The shot's good from Kennard. Another bucket down low. They've been the aggressors taking the ball inside and attacking at the rim. Irving kicks to Hayward. Down low, Horford. And Griffin sends it back on the wing Johnson no good that time good work defensively by Horford stolen by Jackson oh and here we go Jackson nobody back and that one drops Jackson's got seven now in this quarter oh man and Jackson is terrific at playing both ends of the floor and his trademark quickness really putting forth a great effort on defense to come away with that steal 
Irving up top, guarded by Jackson. They grab their own miss and block. That one goes careening off the glass. Griffin passes to Johnson and fouled on the shot, so the bucket counts and a chance for one more here. Oh, man, the quickness that Johnson has out on the break is ridiculous, just beating everyone to the bucket. And we know this league is enjoying great success. The Players Union going into last season created a program, Chris, to fund health insurance for all retired players with three or more years of service. Well, I'm proud of our Players Union. Uh, I hope that other sports take lead. You know, you take care of those that come before you. That's one thing in the NBA we always know and the players will always respect. That's why it was a unanimous vote by the Players Association. One shot. It definitely was a proud moment. I'm proud of my NBA brothers. That's good from Johnson. Boston's gone beyond the arc seven times here in the fourth and been successful three times. Screened by Monroe. Smart dishes to Monroe. That one falls. That gives him a double-double in this one. Ten points and 16 rebounds. Pistons leading by 23. Outside Jackson. Pass to Kennard. to the inside stolen by smart and now with the fast break smart with the ball and slam dunk by smart that's just elite defense by smart seizing the opportunity and taking it the other way Johnson the screen Griffin with it and it's Horford picking him up to the left wing here's Kennard rebounded by smart Smart's got four rebounds in this game. Irving for three. Good, and Smart gets the assist. Smart's got four assists in the game. Irving makes it look so easy. His jumper is on point from this spot. Jackson against Irving. To the right side. Down low. Here's Griffin. Here's Drummond, throws it down as the official calls the foul. It may be a three-point play. Horford, and so he's picked up his final foul, and he will sit for the rest of this game. Morris is checked in for Al Horford. Chris, you see some of the rookies coming into the league. They need to put on more weight. They need to build up a little bit, and how aggressive saying that were you looking to add strength when you came into the NBA? Well, I was fortunate that I already had an NBA-type body, and so I really didn't need to try Mind to bulk up for the NBA. The you know, I really disagree that a lot of guys got to get stronger. Look at Kevin Durant. You know, we all know the famous story about how trainers laughed at him uh, when he got to the league. Uh, it, it, the NBA is unique in that. Do you have skill? Can you play? So, no, Curry doesn't need to put on 25 pounds of muscle, I think we've seen. Durant doesn't need to put on 15 pounds of muscle. It's more about your game. It's more about your core and your balance. You pick up natural weight and natural strength as you go along. But how is your work ethic? Are you in the gym? Are you lifting? Are you working out? Are you getting stronger? That's great. But you don't have to necessarily try to become bigger and stronger. Just try to make sure you have game. That's most important. Celtics trail by 20. Smart, wide open, he fires. A three-pointer off the mark. On the wing, Johnson. Fended by Hayward. Johnson gets the bucket. And one team is just completely outclassing the other tonight. Spirited performance, and it really ignited what is turning out to be a monster win here for Detroit. You don't see this kind of a blowout often, but tonight this is a quality win across the board to deliver out uh, this kind of punishment. They definitely never changed the approach. Uh, they just kept after it and showed they were clearly the better team in just about every single category. And this will be a big win for them. Lucky win number 13 now in the bag. And in a three-game season series, they take the first two, and certainly they've had the edge in this matchup. And one of the key components to this victory, if not the biggest, was the incredible performance for Drummond. The energy he played with tonight was amazing, and it paid off the most on the glass where he dominated the rebounding stats. Now Nelson. Drummond sets the screen for Nelson. 
to the middle. Here's Ellenson. Rebound by Greg Monroe. Oh, you, you've got to be able to deliver when you get a bunny like that. That's just too easy of a shot to miss. And low percentage look on that one. Not sure what he was thinking. Well, sometimes you get a little outside of yourself. You have to be a little more disciplined. Nelson with it. And so Detroit takes this one by a big margin. It was a tale of two teams tonight. One that was in total control, operating flawlessly, and the other just searching for answers that they could never find. I mean, the energy here is just so tremendous. Fans involved from the get-go, and once they started to really pour it on, it was fun to see that rhythm and flow from their perspective. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thank you, Kevin. Blake, very strong game offensively. What gave you the confidence to take over? I'm just putting in the work and my teammates, honestly, believing in me and telling me to be confident at the end of the game. So um, I owe a lot to them. They, they came up with big plays. Um, just everybody working together. Very good win for you tonight, Blake. Congrats. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. And that'll do it, folks. For Greg Anthony, Chris Weber, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for watching the NBA presented by 2K Sports. So long and good night, everyone.